Hi you guys, it's Natalie here. Um, I'm here with Paige Bailey Gale. Paige plays for Leicester. They've just been promoted to the Super League. Um, Paige, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, let's just get straight into it. Um, tell me a bit about yourself growing up, sort of your football journey. How did it develop? How did it start? Um, so most girls will probably say this, but like, you know, playing with the boys in primary school, um, always being the only girl really and then a couple of teachers said why don't you play for the local boys team in the local park um, I was about seven or eight played for about a season or two and then a parent that knew someone out of the Arsenal was like oh why don't you go trial for them I thought all right then I will trial for them and I was about I think I was nine I got in my first season I'm like under 11s and then obviously I went up all the age groups until I got to the under 21s academy um, played a couple games for the first team, trained with them. Really good experience to play with, obviously, world-class players. Mm. But um, I just wanted to experience the women's game in a lower league to get some experience for myself mm. and, like, learn the game. Because, obviously, academy football is a lot different to um, yeah. women, the women's game. So um, I got in contact with Jonathan at Leicester City. Came down for training a couple times, and he's like, I really like what I see. Would you like join us? And I thought, might as well. I got very good vibe from the families, very family orientated um, club. Just felt instant love. And I thought, mm. I'll join them. And then the rest is history, as you know. Yeah. So you, has your family always been very supportive, always like sort of pushed you to do what you want to do? Have you always felt like it was a good career path to go down from young? You know, did you always think, I'm going to be a professional? Um, the thing is, yeah, I've always played sports. I played literally everything in primary school. My mom, my mom always wanted me to do athletics. Mm. Oh, I love athletics. She loved it, like, athletics was her thing. And I was like, mum, like, I love athletics, but football's the one for me. Mum's always been supportive. She's yeah. driven me up and down the country, everywhere I need to go. And she's always been, like, very supportive. The family, like, always, always um, been very supportive as well. So it helps, obviously, the journey that. Um, I'm continuing still on, but yeah, it's been really, really good from the family. So, and you know, you talked there about the Arsenal, the Under-21s, and I remember seeing you play in the FA Youth Cup versus Man United. She scored loads of goals, and I remember loads of people cheering, and I thought, right, this girl's special. Um, you know, how was it then, like, like you said, training with Arsenal, training with these world-class players? Did you feel like they, they, they really supported you? And, you know, when you as you were growing up, do you feel like that? Did you feel pressure or did you feel sort of comfortable? Um, I think when I first went up, I was a bit like, oh my God, like, I'm a bit nervous. I'm thinking, there's a massive jump. Like, no one really realises the massive jump between the academy football and the first, like, especially in Arsenal first team. At their time, yeah. they were very good. So at first, I did feel a lot of pressure because I feel like I've got to be to their standard. I've got to do as much running as they can, but obviously I physically couldn't do that yet. I didn't have the ability to be up there with them. But obviously a lot of the girls helped you and like like kind of gave you support in certain ways and like on the pitch reassurance. She'd be like, if you don't don't do it this time next time or do it like this or do it like that to like mm. help you. But yeah, you do feel pressure and it's hard. But like obviously if you don't, if you crumble under it, it's, it's not really for you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. You talk about Leicester and that family vibe, and you know, I, I've been down to Leicester. It's, it's it's a good vibe, and you know, I've always felt welcome. Do you feel like it was? A, it's a totally different vibe from Arsenal. I'm not saying anything bad about Arsenal, but obviously, you know, they're up there. But Leicester, they have the, the ambition to do it. Do you feel like that support is there? Um, um the same way or different? It's different, like. Because obviously Leicester's come from lower leagues and they've worked their way up and they're mm. in the championship for a couple of seasons. So obviously the setup at Arsenal was a lot more professional at the time when I was there and it was a lot different. So there was obviously a lot more pressure with the name Arsenal. So they had standards to upkeep and certain things that you had to like um, keep up to. So obviously being at Leicester, it was a bit of a shock at first. You're like, whoa. But then you have to understand the journey they were on. So obviously when I joined, we were semi-professional with that. So we're training at night, um, not the best facilities, but obviously they've 
gone up and up and up and now we're training at the men's old ground fever drive and obviously we got promoted and stuff so we've gone up and there was a lot of support like we had a lot of support from the cl- the men's club um obviously the family and supporters and all that so yeah support was a lot different but the vibe of Leicester just felt right for me to be at but, yeah yeah, um, I've seen you as well, Paige, in, in a few England England call ups uh, as well. You know, like the, the under nineteens and a few few call ups. Yeah. Um, how how do you think it compares, like the Lioness squad, then to say club football or you know, like say development football? How do you think that compares? It's a lot different. Like even obviously, well, seventeens, eighteens, nineteens, England is a lot different mm. to the club. You have a lot more like responsibility, and obviously, playing for your nation is like the highest honour you could ever have, depending on what age group you're at. Like, it's mm. the highest honour. But the pressure and expectations are a lot different and you have a lot more responsibility. So, like, we have a lot of things to do. And as you get older, like, through the age groups, you have a lot more responsibility to, like, take on things and accountability and sit, like, trying to shape you into, like, the best footballer you can be, like, person on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a good environment to be in. Mm. I mean, Paige, a lot of fans have been disappointed that there's not um, as much diversity probably than they would like to see in the England setup. I mean, there's there's youth players like yourself, Ebony, Salmon, Lauren James, and they're sort of in and around coming up. Do you think yeah. it's going to change in the future that, or do you think uh, there's a lot more to go do you, before we see like um, it's probably the same amount in the England men's and the England women's and the Premier League and the WSL? Do you think there's a a long way or do you think it's, it's on there and, and the more sort of different players coming up? I think it's on the rise because obviously when I started playing there was to look up to there was uh, I just think one or two Rachel Yankee when I was really young and then there's Dan mm. Clark, Aluko and I can't think of any off the top of my head right now so obviously now I'm older and I'm in the game there's a lot more black players or players from different ethnicities playing mm. different cultures and backgrounds but in the England squad, it would be lo- lovely to see a lot more black girls or Asian girls or different types yeah. of cultures in there. Um, hopefully soon, hopefully, fingers mm. crossed, that um, in the next couple of years that there will be more girls like that in their squads because it's, it's a bit disheartening sometimes, you know, mm. to not see, especially for the younger girls looking up. You're just thinking, like, if I want to play for England, oh, there's no one like me or looks like me in their squad, like, can I do it? Or So hopefully people like me, Ebony Salmon, Lauren James, um, more girls coming up, that can do it and, like, obviously give girls hope that, yeah, when I grow up, I can be in England squad because mm. they look the same. And, but it's obviously a massive gap compared to the men's game. Like, mm. you've got a lot more men and different ethnicities and like a lot more black men but hopefully it's on the rise in the women's game yeah do you, i mean what do you think could be done what, do you, what would you like to see done like is there anything that you thought you know you growing up uh playing that would have made it easier for you or easier for other girls like yourself um i just feel like more opportunity really mm. because like we're doing the, i feel like we're doing the right things like there's a lot of black girls out there that's doing the right things or girls that are from different cultures as i said before it's just, I don't, I don't know what it is from their side, but we just want to mm. get recognised because we're doing the right things as well. It's just, it's a bit hard, isn't it? Like to go into England squad that's predominantly white. So, um, yeah, it's not too bad, but I just want to keep working hard and hopefully I can get my myself on the radar. Yeah, I'm guessing that's your aim, your goals uh, for next season. Definitely, like. Maybe make yeah. a few squads or, hopefully. you know, build up. Yeah, hopefully get my name back in. Uh, people talking about me soon, hopefully when I come back from injury. So, yeah. Good. No, because I definitely think you can make it. And then what you said about opportunity, I think I think it is there. I'd love to see, like, the names that I mentioned, Ebony, you, LJ. I think you, you've got the talent to definitely be there and in, in and around it. And I've seen in the, uh, the women's suit, the... NWSL in America, they've got something. I know it's a bit different. There's there's the more people playing there, but they've got something called the the Black Players Collective, where sort of like sort of the more experienced players might give um, 
talks to like the less experienced, help the clubs, help help the, uh, the national team, just sort of like explain what more can be done. Do you think something like that would be beneficial? I have seen Kick It Out have done like a new new thing, sort of uh, trying to get more diversity. Do you think more initiatives like that would help yeah. or would you like Definitely. to see something like that? Definitely, because then you feel like when you're talking about it, you're not alone. Like you're with people that obviously have been there, done it, or are doing it on the same journey as you. So then you feel like mm. we're all in this together. If we get more people talking about it or more support and help people that have maybe a bit further back in their journey and we're obviously up here and they're here, it will help all of us get here and then hopefully get into the teams we yeah. want to be in and the England squads or the national teams that we want to play in then, yeah, it will help a lot more. Mm. Paige, I can't uh, let you go and not just sort of bring up, obviously, what's, what's happened recently with, um, you know, Sancho and Rashford. And when you saw the, uh, the the penalties and what's been happening in the news and we're seeing more and we're seeing politicians getting called out, what's your thoughts on that? It's a tough one. It's very, like... I'm so happy that they've done so well. Like, they made... Like the black community is so proud and England is so proud for doing what, like, especially Saka, he's 19, the same age as me, Saka, getting so many minutes assist and all that kind of stuff. But obviously, when it went wrong, like missing penalties and that, it just felt disheartening and like heartbreaking that the country turned on them and it went so negative so quick that it's hard to deal with. Like, when we're doing well and we're scoring, like, when Sterling was scoring and everything, everyone was so happy. But as soon as like Rashford, Sancho, and Saka miss the penalties, it's like, oh, it's all their fault, it's all their fault. But then when we're when we're winning and that, it's we ain't black or we ain't from different like ethnicity groups or cultures. But as soon as we we lose or do something negative, our culture and ethnicity, like race and all that comes into it, and I think it's, it needs to be cut out. Like certain things and certain steps should be taken. It's not only signing petitions that racism racist um, support shouldn't be in stadiums. I feel like it's all coming from social media. Mm. So I personally think that if you've got a social media account, you need to verify it with a, a legal document. So you can be held yes. accountable for your actions. So if I can tweet something, you know it's me. It's not like I can make a fake account and it's user 1234 and you don't know who it is. Like, I feel like you should be accountable for what you're putting out there towards people. Because we don't know what, Saka might be playing really well on the, on the pitch, but we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. So you could be having family problems or that could just tip someone over the edge. So like all the posts that I see is that all you can be in this world is kind and that's what people need to be because mm. you never know what's going on and the detriment or the effects of racial abuse or homophobic abuse or whatever it is kind of abuse can be on these people because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. Because we're not just footballers, we're players as well. Like, we're not just mm. footballers, we're the people behind the, the footballer as well. 100%. And I mean, even as a fan, just myself reading it and seeing it and knowing that it's probably going to happen. And, you know, even the, when they were taking me and all the, the hoo-ha, I think it's really good to see. Yeah. Uh, it's really um, good to see that they were still taking the knee. Um, and, you know, the and now I hear Team GB are going to take the knee. Um, and, you know, we're hopefully still in the Premier League and the WSL, you guys will still take the knee because it, it not just seeing you play like a black girl, like I'm a bit older than you, Paige, but seeing, you know, more black women and girls and black men and boys, but just it's, it's inspirational to me who doesn't play as a fan. So definitely just seeing you guys go out there taking a knee it's, it's it's good for the whole black community I think and do you find that do you find that people are like yes carry on boys keep doing it yes girls taking the knee you right. know amongst the black community obviously you'll always have those negative people but you know do you find that people are sort of thanking you or well I'm thanking you now but do you find that um sometimes it depends like I don't really it depends like on Instagram you do get like the messages and that and it's very lovely to see that. some of the messages you get are so, so lovely and that. But sometimes like, I have had people make comments and that, but I just like try not to read them things. I don't yeah. want to see it. Negativity yeah. is not, not needed. So like, I'm just trying to keep it positive. And when people will send you them kind of messages, it's like, oh, I'm doing the right things and people are looking up to me or 
people are seeing what we're doing and it's changing their lives. Mm. So that it does give you that like extra boost of like what we're doing is right and it's helping a lot more people than we think we're helping. You don't know who you're helping, but when people let's say uh, message you on Instagram or message you on Twitter or come to the games and tell you, you're like, mm. oh, I'm actually making a difference, and it's it's lovely to be a part of that and to see it. No, hundred percent. Um, you know, hopefully, like through conversations that's just why I'm doing it just trying to put voices out there different players not just black and you know brown players and different areas, but every player and just sort of definitely want to see more from women's football are you excited for next season obviously playing with Leicester but and then hopefully when you when you in your injuries thing uh, injury when you get better but you know are you excited for the the WSL next year you know going to be on Sky and all that kind of thing I think it's going to be a lot more people interested yeah. a lot more people going yeah I'm absolutely buzzing. Like it's, I've been, it's what I've been working towards like my whole career. So to be in the top flight league in this country. So obviously to play with players that we've got in the team, and obviously play against international players, it's going to be so good. I'm going to learn so much, and um, I can't wait to obviously play against players like that. It's, like, it's a great experience, but I can't wait to get started. I'll be back from injury soon, so. I'll be ready for the season and I'll be ready for the season. Yeah, that's good. That's all that matters, yeah. Season starting. Can't yeah. wait. And I'll definitely see you down there. Well, yeah, I'll, right. I will. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Paige. Thanks a lot. Right. I'm going to get it out later. Guys, like, share, subscribe, uh, tune in. I'm going to hopefully get have more people on. But, yeah, is there anything? Any last words, Paige? I'll, just, I'll give you the floor. Are you happy? No, I'm happy. I'm happy. Good, good. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, see you soon. Bye. See you.